Hi guys. Hi guys. Hello. Uh, I'm here with Robert of uh, DreamHot9 and we're going to discuss uh, Heavy Gear, the recent Kickstarter and plans they have for the future, some of the hang-ups they had in the Kickstarter, lessons learned. Um, the headaches. There was something else that uh, we were going to start with that I absolutely totally forgot already. So what were we going to start with? Well, we're going to talk about the new plastics that we have here at Gen Con. You know, like, uh, and also, we actually have a little sample. People that are here trying the game out, you know, doing a demo, get a little sample pop of either a Hunter or a Jaeger, you know, to put together. And we've had some cool things that we added in, like the last minute, you know, where we added more weapons onto it because we had delays in the Kickstarter, along with the, actually, an arm pose that allows you to hold the gun across the chest, you know, we were able to do. But uh, you know, we were lucky, you know, like this last week, the company uh, up in uh, Lebanon, New ha uh, Indiana, you know, which is doing our plastics, you know, is uh, was able to deliver us the first sets of plastics, you know, which we have here at the show. In the last three days, we've actually been packing up boxes of plastics, you know, to, to, to show people. And a few of our lucky Kickstarter backers, you know, like contact us, and we were able to give them their Kickstarter rewards here at the show. You know, like it's, as long as they told us, you know, we brought down the add-ons. That when we get back to our office next week, we'll basically be able to ship everything, start shipping everything out. You know, it's going to take a while. We've got over a thousand backers. You know, like to get stuff out to, but at least everything is coming along good. You know, the plastics turned out amazing. You know, and we're you know going to basically be making sure we get everything out to everybody. You know, like before we start shipping any retailer orders or anything like that. You know, for, for our Kickstarter backers because we know that that's important. You know, and we are planning to do some more Kickstarters in the future. So we need their support. Do you have some other questions? Yeah, you um, ran into a couple of delays that turned out to be blessings in disguise. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a learning process when we're going through. Like when we started the, the project back at the end of 2014, we had done most of our 3D models, you know, like using a Maya software, you know, which we were able to go and make, you know, rapid prototyping prototypes, you know, like with Shapeways and, you know, produce miniatures with. But you can't actually use those models to produce, you know, like the plastic injection molds. So we had to go and find, you know, modelers that could do solid works, you know, like be able to save the files in these what are called parasolid or step, step files, you know. And that ended up adding like months onto the project, you know, because those people that do those type of things don't necessarily do robots. So we had to train them up, you know, like a, you know, making it look like a good robot, making all the parts work, and, you know, because of that, you know, like delays, you know, like what you went through, and we've learned, you know, like that even once you've got everything perfect, when you have to rely on other people when we're making the molds, you know, it can take a while to basically you know, get all of the you know, little details fixed up in a mold. Like you might get a test pop back and find out why did the hand not come out properly. Well, we got to go back and have the guys, you know, re EDM the mold, you know, to that's electrical discharge, you know, where they're actually burning the steel with electrodes made of, uh, of carbon, you know, to get it fixed up. You know, and, you know, that takes time, you know, like, so it ended up taking us several months to get the, the final molds made, then have them shipped. Yeah, they finally arrived, you know, like uh, at our manufacturer here in in uh, Indiana. Yeah, and then they had to clean up the molds, yeah, because during shipping, they're all coated in shipping grease, so nothing gets corroded. Not, so everything adds on. Now, the next time we do a Kickstarter, at least we'll know that you, know, you can't plan to have stuff happen, you know, like literally over the next couple of you know weeks or months. You've got to plan for long term, you know, like to know that all of these delays are there. You know, you can't do something, you know, like, you know, on the you know, spur of the moment, you know. Everybody takes time to deal with. That's taught us a lesson. So we know that when we do our next Kickstarter, we're going to have everything prepared, like all the 3D models finished before, have the, the company that's going to be making the molds already lined up, and just have to basically get, get the Kickstarter to be assessed to pay for all the, the costs involved. But the, that's what we've learned, you know, like it's been long, you know, like in trying, but, you know, like finally we've got good plastic and you know, plastics are actually made here in the USA. You know, like we're not making them in China. You know, like we showing that we can do it here. Even our new rule book is being printed you know, in Tennessee to, to make sure that we can promote the fact that stuff can be done locally. You know, and present a cool game. You know, like with new rules that with plastic miniatures that with a lower price point to allow gamers to get into the into the game at a reasonable price. Okay. Um, and one of the things that came out of that actually was. Now all your basic sprues have uh, all the uh, 
accessory packs. Yeah, you have all the weapons, you know, for the different options of the gears are on there. Sometimes you'll have extra legs, extra arms to customize, but we're still keeping all the basic stuff from the the original resin and pewter miniatures, you know, like where you have ball joints on the arms and on the, uh, to the torso, to the hips, the heads have ball joints so you can actually pose your miniature, you know, and it's just making it a lot easier to pose, you know, with plastic, if you don't like the pose, you know, like say you want the legs wider, yeah, it's just shave off, you know, like the top of the leg, you know, glue it back on in a slightly wider pose, you know, because you can, it's easy to file down plastic. And these are actually uh, styrene plastic, so they actually work with super glue or model cement like you have for regular model kits. So you can do customization, you know, with all the parts we've got there, you know, and really change the poses up if you don't like them, you know, so you can basically, you know, just chop the knee at one spot, re-glue it in another angle, and bang, you got a new pose. So then later this fall, you're going to do, uh, well, that's, um, I cannot remember the name from here. Oh, uh, you mean Dreadnoughts? Dreadnoughts. I was yes. going to say Dread Ground. No, no, we're actually working with a new company called Fusion uh, Fusion Core Studios. You know, Runji Lau was one of our former employees working on Jovian Chronicles in the past and a lot of other projects. And he's been working in the last two years on Heavy Gear Dreadnoughts to actually do a landship battle fleet game, you know, which is going to be doing a Kickstarter this fall. And we're supporting him, you know, so he's learned through what we've learned, you know, doing Kickstarter and, pla and plastics. And it's going to be a Kickstarter to actually do, you know, plastic miniatures of land ships and completely new designs, you know, so people will have a, a new standalone game with a new rule set, you know, that has land ships as the stars. So you actually have the land ships fighting one another, and they, with most land ships, you have them equipped with uh, gears and striders and tanks and aircraft, you know, they come out. But they're more the support units for the land ships. Yeah? So it's, it's going to be a cool thing, and we will hopefully get lots of support for that. And then uh, coming next year, you know, DreamPod 9 is going to do another Kickstarter for the three more factions of, of Heavy Gear. Sometime later in 2017, we'll basically do a Kickstarter for uh, the Peace River faction, New Coal faction, and uh, Eden, or sorry, not Eden, New Uto Coal. Yeah, Utopia. So you're going to basically be able to get the Unlike Warriors, the Unlike and Warrior Fours and some of the new things like the Arbalus J for, for Peace River. Uh, and you're going to also have the new coal stuff, you know, like where you'll have Draboas in plastic, you know, like Chevaliers, Chasseurs. And for the uh, Utopians, you're going to get the nice little Enkido drones. You know, and we're going to actually come up with some new pieces for that, you know, like to, to fill in the line as well to give it more options when we do that. And uh, other than that, let's see, one other thing we have to mention is uh, we're actually working on a new rule set for Jovian Chronicles, you know, like miniature battles, called Jovian Chronicles Fleet Scale, you know, which we've got a working title right now called Sega Wars. We're not, not sure if it's going to be that. It might be, end up being called Jovian Wars, you know, and that's going to use new Fleet Scale miniatures, which we've been putting out, you know, which have little tiny, you know, 18 millimeter tall exo armors, you know, like on flight stands where you have three exos. And the new rules are going to basically be completely different from heavy gear, you know, or the old Jovian rules. It's a completely new rule set that uh, Dave McLeod, our, our game designer, has been working on these last several months. And we plan on releasing that as a uh, free download ebook, you know, when it gets into beta later this fall for people to try out before we finalize the rules. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. All right. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Always a pleasure. Take care, Matt. Take care. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. We'll be back next year.